A lot of people on. ask, you know, if you live in your van, how do you deal without getting pizza delivery? Well, simple. Oh, wow. You call them up. You just tell them where you're parked. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Oh, the day I break these chains, I'm bound for the life of the simple things. Well, it's official. I got the plates and everything. I'm officially from South Dakota and I'm all registered there and everything. I'm going to do a breakdown on the fee cost a little bit later on. Now that I have the plates and everything, it's time to head up into Vancouver. I'm going to go and support Justin's event that he's doing up there in Vancouver. He's calling it CamperCon, so I'm going to go check that out and uh, say hi to him. It's been a while since I've seen him. Almost to the border crossing. Been a little bit of a wait. It's probably been about 45 to 50 minutes now already. So it was a lot longer than I expected. I had checked online and it told me about 20 minutes at this crossing and others were like 70 minutes. So this is gonna end up being about the same length of time. So we'll see how she goes. Last time they harassed me and tore the van all apart, but they were very polite about it. <laughs> when I came over with my green van back in 2014, we'll see how it goes this time. They didn't give me any hassle when I was with Andrew when I went across with him just the other day, so about a week ago, so we'll see. Hopefully I don't get messed with this time. Andrew told me that a lot of times, whether you get messed with at customs and stuff matters a lot on, you know, how many times you've been across and stuff, if, if you've been safe and back and across and stuff before, so I'm hoping that's the case. Well. It's been an hour and 10 minutes and still waiting on getting over there to the border crossing. It's been a while, at least I'm getting close now. This time around the experience was about 10,000 times better. I got asked just a handful of questions and then I was told to uh, go ahead and come in. I let them know I was only going to be here till Monday and stuff so they were a lot more cool it just shown a flashlight in the back for a little bit and then let me in I don't know if you guys can see it but I always think this is just gorgeous I'm heading over the Portsmouth bridge right now on my way into actual Vancouver I'm about ready to pass the suburb of Burnaby and then I'll be into Vancouver I was kind of heading over to North Van, but I just got a message from Justin that he's back at the beach, so I might end up heading to the beach. Oh yeah, you saw the video of my yeah. last one. Because yeah. I yeah. took that van to the camp, I think it was the first camper con. Okay. The one at, well, there, it was at Peace Arch. Ah. It was the one where somebody made a cape that was like Canada on the outside and then when you sliced it open it was the American flag on the Oh, inside. that's cool. That that's was, too yeah. cool. And he made it in his motorhome. I can't that's remember That's too name. cool. Yeah. It was really, it was really fancy. It was cool. That's yeah. so awesome. <laughs> that guy had to have been a baker. No, no, he had like a real oven. He could have been a baby. <laughs> the, the, the room for a bake off. There you go. Oh, the, YouTube, the YouTube channel that's gonna, would that's be gonna, awesome. Bro, you, the bro Road Pro Bake, bake Off, off channel. You know what I do? I love that. I like how I Sam gave me a cone. I feel very official. I know. That's yeah. because you are now. <laughs> the Canadians <laughs> paying this time. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. I'm paying guys. in Canadian dollars. Yeah, everybody around here. Monopoly here's money? <laughs> no, and we're having good times. <laughs> With, with our Monopoly money, as these guys here call it. <laughs> money pictures with ladies on it. What are y'all thinking? Yeah, I know. Why do you got ladies on it? A lot of people it? ask, you know, if you live in your van, how do you deal without getting pizza delivery? Well, simple. Hello? You call them up. You just tell them where you're parked. <laughs> yep. Exactly. And if you're parked in an area they don't know, you just get a GPS. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Woohoo! Thank you. Thanks, there. brother. No worries. Dig in.
doubles man. All right, everybody surrounding sign, here, waiting on the moment that we got our 15 oh, minutes of fame, or probably 15 five seconds. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a good two minutes. <laughs> Sounded like 30 seconds. Tennis. Jumps all over the net court. Well, I didn't get the <laughs> winner to get the break and go up 4-1. And she rolls from there. Uh, some people doing it slightly differently. That story is coming up next. Let's stay with us. There's somebody looked at a shoe. Boo! They went to commercial break yeah. again. <laughs> All right, now I just want to talk because I'm not sure on YouTube about this, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chevron, care for your car. You live in a house, I live in a house. So do I, it just has wheels. We are BC's News. All right, now if you think buying a house is too expensive, how about living in a van instead? Our Aaron MacArthur has been to check out what life is like for those living on four wheels and why more and more people are actually doing it this way. She's 1982 and one of the only ones that I got a doorbell. It's a little rough inside. You're building this. Oh, yeah. But for William Price, this is home. He's rebuilding his RV from the frame up while he lives in it. But it's a major step up from the first vehicle he lived in. I uh, started off in a 97 Chevy Cavalier thinking, I'll oh, save up a couple hundred dollars and move back into your apartment. I want to try and live rent free. Sunday at Spanish Banks, a meetup for people who call the open road home. A surprising number of people choose to live in vans. Burn some wood. The organizer calls himself just incredible. That's it, that's my heat. He's been living in a van for 16 years and wants people to know him and his friends aren't homeless. I think it's really good to get it out there too that we're not a bunch of homeless bums. We actually have a home. This is our home. And a lot of us are working class. We work a regular job just like you and everyone else. Most of the people here actually make the decision to live in a van or an RV because it's cheaper. And how should I add extra battery? Chelsea McLaughlin and Colby Thacker moved into their van full time in May. The van payment and insurance, their only real costs. If you're used to a commuter car, the gas is a little bit more, but, but the amount you're saving in rent, um, you know, rent's only going to start getting a lot more, a lot more expensive. So it's, it's a little bit more economical, allows you to kind of save for the future. And, and not only rent, I find you save a lot with, within bills, like so hydro and wa like water, electricity. Drive down just about any street in the city and you will see the campers parked. Who lives inside them is as diverse as the rigs they build themselves. People trying to afford living in an increasingly unaffordable city. Aaron MacArthur, Global News. Mm. Where's your shower into your hair and stuff? Well, yeah, well, for well, you. I know, that's yeah. what I mean. Are you yeah. kidding me? I guess it's a, it's a lifestyle decision. I don't want that to fly in the face. I appreciate that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it would probably swing like right at you. Dave over here from right up north of... 60, he's uh, flexing and uh, showing off his boobies over here. No, I'm trying to look at my sunburn. Look at my <laughs> sure, sure. That's, that's what they all say when they get caught. Good morning, everybody. It's nice waking up to the bay here with the mountain backdrop. It was a great event. There's a handful of us left right now, and uh, we're getting ready to head over and enjoy some bonds on Broadway. Right back down here in Vancouver, they got this nice little restaurant out here on the beach and then a uh, pretty nice little bay. I had a great time over here and it's now time to head back into the States. I'm going to go and hang out with a high school buddy of mine back in my hometown. I'll show you guys a little bit around there when I get back in there. There goes Justin's ride. He caught back up with me. <laughs> I think that's a pretty cool setup he's got there with that Class B. He's done a lot to it. Good morning, everybody. Although it's starting to get pretty close to afternoon, I think. But I'm here in Moses Lake, Washington, which is the town that I pretty much grew up in. It's not where I was born, but it was pretty much where I was raised. And I'm here with my best friend from high school, Mike. Want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> I, I don't know if Mike wants to be a YouTube star or not though. No. <laughs> okay, so I'm over here and sitting right in front of Bob's and Mike's already headed in real quick. I wanted to kind of tell the story about this because this here, this restaurant's been like a big deal, like especially when I was in uh, high school as far as growing up and everything. Now right here, it's just called Bob's Cafe and Inn. But back in the day, 
it was actually just a parking lot here for the truck stop. And over there across the street was a restaurant called Bob's and Ernie's restaurant. And they split apart and Ernie ended up turning it just into a truck stop. And then Bob started the restaurant here. He was an old farmer and everything. So real good guy. Last time I ever talked to him was back when I was about 14 years old when I was in the restaurant one time. But he was a pretty good old guy and I guess he still frequents coming into the restaurant. This here cinnamon roll, they used to be even bigger than this, but this was a big, big deal here at Bob's. I'm hearing that it might not be as good as it used to be, so Mike and I are gonna share it. Get out there, connect with people, live your big story, and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck. Peace, guys. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I tell you all about it when I see you again. We come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see.